How's it going everyone? This is Soul Singed here and welcome to my review of BattleBots Season 6 Episode 3. Without further ado, let's just get straight into the fights. First fight we had Hypershock versus Slammo. Now, I predicted hype by the way, I went five and three this fight. Uh this episode. I got three fights wrong, five of them the correct, which is still pretty good. Not as good as my last couple, but not bad. But anyway, Hypershock versus Slamo. Slamo is, of course, a very good robot. And Hypershock can be a good bot when it's finished and working right. And Will Bales, for once, got his bot ready on time. Hypershock dominated this match. There wasn't really much Slamo could do. Uh. Yeah, Hypershock was very dominant. They definitely look like a top contender based on this one fight. My only issue with Hypershock now is the tire-on-rim design. They still have those tire-on-rim wheels. And they didn't even suffer much damage, but I noticed one of the wheels was damaged. And they're also super exposed, which I don't like. So if they go up against anyone that can really get to their wheels, that's, their, that's the main weakness I see from them now. And then next up was Valkyrie versus P1. And Valkyrie is one of the most durable uh, undercutters in BattleBots and one of the most destructive bots in BattleBots. And P1 struggled in past seasons, really showed signs of improvement last year. And this year, they look, they look good so far. They managed to disable Valkyrie's weapon and just sort of dominate this match because Valkyrie is the type of robot that once its weapon goes down it doesn't really have much else in terms of pushing power or control and P1 is a control bot and P1 did what control bots do disable your opponent's weapon bully them around the box take the W so very very impressive win for P1 and uh hopefully Valkyrie can get their weapon back going and I'd love to see more destruction from them. And then next up was Huge versus Riptide. This fight made me angry. I Huge is one of my personal favorite robots and last season hurt. <laughs> last season hurt, especially that Hydra fight. I will never let go of that goddamn Hydra fight. Okay? I will forever hate Hydra because of that match against Huge. I don't. I know it's petty, okay? You don't have to tell me that, oh, the joke's lame. I'm not even fucking joking. I legitimately hate Hydra now because of what they did to Huge. And I thought this was going to be a pretty easy win for Huge going up against a rookie bot because typically rookies don't look that good their first year. Riptide came out looking pretty good. They have a sort of unique egg beater spinner that's about as wide as a drum, and it has some power. They came, box rush huge, hit them, got them flipped up and got one of their wheels caught in the screws, and they were never able to get out of that, and that led to the fight being over. Uh, of course, Riptide looked very impressive, a lot of power from that weapon. And one thing I have to say, Huge can spin its weapon in either direction. And usually going up against a weapon like this, they would spin their weapon this way so they can hit over the top. However, they were spinning the weapon the opposite way, which just made it easier for Riptide to hit them and pop them up like that. So really, part of this fight's loss can really go to Huge, just not spinning their weapon the way and as with the experience this team has i don't know why they went with their weapon spinning that direction they should have known better but very impressive win for riptide and hopefully this isn't foreshadowing foreshadowing a bad season for huge like last year and then after that was fusion versus cobalt most people saw this fight going to Cobalt. And I was one of the ones that was saying, you know, Fusion looked pretty damn good last year when it was working, when it wasn't getting stuck on the floor, and when it wasn't catching on fire. And I was saying, if Fusion got everything going this year, this bot could be a giant nut contender. 
And that's what they did in this fight. They just dominated with their vertical spinner. I don't think they ever got their horizontal into play. They just dominated with that with that vertical. And Cobalt went with those really, really sharp wedge to try and get underneath. But I think that wedge ended up hurting them because they never their weapon, their spinner, never made contact with Fusion. Fusion just bullied them with their vertical spinner until they died. And Fusion never got stuck on the floors, never had drive issues, never caught on fire. They looked good. They did very well on this match. So, um, yeah, looking forward to seeing what more Fusion can do. Um, if they continue not having issues, they could really be a contender. And next up, we had Witch Doctor versus Duck. And I picked Witch Doctor winning this just because Witch Doctor is another one of my personal favorite bots. And then I knew it would be tough because Duck is built like a tank. The whole strategy of Duck is just survive until your opponent dies. They like they literally their motto should be, "Hey, let me break your fist with my face." In fact, I think that's actually a joke that um they made in the show. And yeah, Duck took a beating, and they didn't disable Witch Doctor's weapon. Um, the team captain for Witch Doctor said that they noticed they were having some problems with their weapon, so they shut it down because A, they didn't want to damage something further than it already was, and B, they figured it would look worse on the judges if they just ran their weapon until it completely burnt out and started smoking, it would look like Duck was doing more damage. So they just shut it down as more of a... to make it look better for the judges and to not damage uh, their weapon motors, which is really smart on their part because if you're having problems with the weapon, why push it and break something when you can still save it? So yeah, very good fight. Both bots looked good. They Both bots did what they were designed to do. But Witch Doctor just got the better of Duck, and Witch Doctor took the W on this one. And then for our main event... Oh, shit. I skipped over fire. I literally wrote down the fights on the sheet of paper, so I wouldn't skip over any, and I still skipped over one. Black Dragon versus Ice Wave. Black Dragon looked very good in this fight. Ice Wave never really had a chance to spin up. They never really had a chance to really get any good hits in. Um, Black Dragon disabled their weapon very early. They didn't damage the motor, but the blade wasn't spinning. You, you could still hear <clears throat> their engine running because for those who don't know, Ice Wave has an internal combustion engine. Um... That's what ice means, internal combustion engine. And Black Dragon disabled their blade. Their weapon, their engine was still roaring. It was still running fine, but they must have broke a mount or broke a connector or something, and the blade just wasn't spinning. And the Black Dragon dominated this match, which is kind of surprising because last year they were very durable, but in every one of their matches they did just enough to win. And then they come in in this match against Ice Wave and just completely dominate. So very impressive win on them. And one thing the show really touched on is how the internal combustion engines are kind of an old technology that Ice Wave is just pushing as far as it can go. And I mean, and to be fair, it is an obsolete technology that... I feel like can't really be improved upon like ice wave has got it as good as it can be and as other robots get more and more durable and as electronics get better and better I feel like ice wave is slowly getting left in the dust That's one thing I've noticed about the last few seasons is a lot of bots that dominated 10 years ago or so are really starting to show their age and slowly fade out as the meta continues to get more perfected as new designs are coming into play new technologies so yeah hopefully ice wave is still uh competable you know hopefully they're still a contender um we'll just have to wait and see what they can do in their next match now the main event copperhead versus lockjaw 
Copperhead looked about as good as they were last year, which they looked very, very good last year. I think they're a number three seed. They went 3-0 and in the regular season. Got uh, upset by Huge in the round of 16, I believe. But Copperhead looked about as good as Copperhead has always looked. And Lockjaw looked very, very good too. Um, Lockjaw, I believe starting in Season 2 or Season 3 is when they converted Lockjaw from being a control bot to a vertical spinner and they've been very wishy-washy one fight they may look very good the next fight they don't look so good in this fight they looked pretty damn good um they did lose their weapon but the bot was very durable they had very powerful drivetrain and it was just a fight to the end with both bots. i think both of them lost their weapon i can't exactly remember but very good match this is one that you could say you could look at it through one lens and say lockjaw one look at it through another say copperhead one but copperhead took the w and i think that was the right call uh copperhead did just a little bit more than lockjaw to get the win but um yeah look very good showing from both of these bots <laughs> so yeah very good win for copperhead and very good showing for lockjaw and then the YouTube exclusive was Claw Viper versus Pardon My French. I did not think Claw Viper would win this match. I figured they would come out like last year, have drive problems and control problems. I also didn't know how much power they would have to lift things. Because their lifter looks like it's made out of plastic. And it looks similar to the same type of plastic that Huge uses for his wheel. So I figured it would just... They would try to pick up something and then it would just bend and not be able to actually grab something and pick it up. And then part of my French looks good. Uh, they have this massive... They're super compact. They have this massive jump spinner. And they look like they could do a lot of damage. However... That's not what happened. <clears throat> and for the first time ever, we saw a, a team captain, because before each match, you know, the, the team captains kind of, in a little bitty square in the bottom of the screen, interview style, explain what their strategies are for the matches, how they feel about their opponent and everything. And th I think this is the first time that I've seen a team captain come out and blatantly admit that, yeah, our bot has a lot of issues, so I don't know. Their team captain was basically saying how our maneuverability and mobility kind of sucks because when we try to turn, the gyroscopic force of the spinner causes it to lift up on two wheels. So either we're going to hit them and destroy them or we're going to destroy ourselves. But either way, a lot of mayhem is going to happen. So their team captain like blatantly admitted that, yeah, our bot has issues, but hey, let's see what happens. So with that, you're thinking that they just have a super powerful weapon and they're going to be a glass cannon. However, when the fight started, part of my French, part of my French's weapon, it spun, but it looked like it was only spinning at about a fourth or maybe a third of what its full speed should be. I don't know if they were having issues. I don't know if their weapon motors are just very poor and they just can't spin it up like that or if they were having some kind of mechanical issues but their weapon never really spun up to full speed at least i hope it, they never reached full speed i hope what they did do wasn't full speed it didn't have a whole lot of speed just overall part of my french just looked kind of mediocre um it really gave off vibes of some of the bots from seasons one and two uh like ultra violent or sweet revenge and how they just looked very, very mediocre. And Claw Viper just completely dominated the match. They uh came out, suplexed them super early, and part of my French can't self-right, so realistically the match could have been over right there. But Claw Viper said, nah, I want to make more of a fight out of this. Pushed them around some more, got them flipped around some more, got them flipped back over, but had damaged their drive by that point. And... They were immobile, and that was the end of the fight. But realistically, this fight could have been over in less than 20, 25 seconds or so. 
Um, but Claw Viper, they wanted to keep the fun going because clearly, pardon my French, showed them no threat. So they figured, hey, why not? Let's just have some more fun with them. Really get a feel for the new drive and all that. And Claw Viper looked very good. They still had the speed. And now they still have control. Because uh, last year the issue was they had a lot of speed, but they didn't have a lot of control. Now they seem to have both. And their lifter actually impressed me some. I didn't think they would have that much lifting power with how flimsy it looked. But they got a beautiful suplex on part of my French. So pretty impressive showing from part of my French. And uh, yeah, that just about wraps up this kind of, this little review for episode 3. Um, we just hit 1,000 subscribers, so I really want to appreciate everyone who has taken the time to watch my videos, uh, who have subscribed over the last month or so. It really pushed me to keep making videos, and it just really makes me feel... It, it, it's so awesome to see so many people subscribing to my channel. So, uh, from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys, and uh, yeah. Peace.